Hello folks, this is Leah Banasaki from Master Lab Systems. Today we'll be looking at the Java Spring Boot with Project Lombok to simplify our code using powerful annotations. Okay? So let's look at why you're using Lombok. Well, Lombok reduces boilerplate code in Java applications, which is easy to use with annotations, and it works seamlessly with Spring Boot. Also, it improves code readability and maintainability. Okay? Let's look at the overview of using Lombok annotations. Well, for example, the first annotation we have, which is getters or setter, basically generate automatically getters and setters for your uh, for your project variables or for your model variables. Using the two string annotation, it creates the two string function, which you can just simply to call it. Using the equals and hash code, it adds your equals and hash code functions automatically as well. Using the no args constructor or all args constructor, well, this one defines your constructors, meaning your automated constructor and your default constructor. Using the add build annotations, it provides a builder pattern to your bro to your model. And lastly, using the add data, it combines most of the common annotations above. Basically, those could be uh well, basically we put combines getters and setters automatically and the hash code and the two string functions those are the common uh, annotations that it combines using the active data okay let's look at the prerequisites that you are require for us to use project lombok in our java spring boot applications well we require java 17 or later version may then or crackle as the build tool spring boot initialize or any ite to initialize your spring boot project and plus an internet connection to download your project Lombok dependencies, okay? Well, let's look at how we can set up a new Spring Boot project that we will be using for our Lombok project, for our Lombok integration, okay? So first of all, you could go to Spring Initializer. That basically this will also give you uh, an overview of how you can create your application. Well, if you have a new Spring Initializer, to create a Spring Boot application, you can simply look at my previous Java tutorials uh, where I'm showcasing how you can create a Spring Boot project using uh, the Spring Initializer. Okay. And once you create your project using Spring Initializer, you will simply import it to your ITE. So you can automatically there, uh, maybe we can just simply view it. Okay, so. What I have here, this is basically a link that will take you to Spring Initializer where you could simply spin up your Spring Boot project. So this using another using that to spin up your Spring Boot project, you simply specify, okay, language, Java, it's fine. as the build a tool. Of course, let's use Maven for now. So let's use 3.5 and you simply provide your project with a data. Once you do that, of course, you provide your is the is the packaging yeah file and java vision and 17 that's fine you can leave it there and dependencies that you will require obvious since we are using lombok the it is lombok simply add lombok and another let's do web this is a spring boot application so we need to web it's well basically these are the two dependencies that we require and so on and once you do this, then you will simply generate your project. Once you generate your project, it will give you automatically, as you can see, since I didn't specify any names, so it'll give you a time to But this is another way, essentially, how you can use Spring Initializer to create or to quickly spin up your Spring Boot application. Okay, once you do that, of course, you will import it to your IDE, either IntelliJ or whichever IDE that it might be using in your case okay so okay let's go back to our slides so once you do that folks you will simply open up and unzip it and open to your ITE. okay so now as we have already added to that well let's look at now uh how spring boot and then you can run your application of course just to see if you can set up successfully so now for example let's look at a sample code uh a java model without lombok so look at this user class that contains two variables, uh, basically a string name and an integer. So this means that we we'll essentially have to define, of course, a constructor and 
a default constructor and, and also an argumented constructor, which we could also see in this case, those are two constructors, the default one, which is empty, and the argumented one that contains uh, two, uh, two arguments for our variables. And lastly, it also have the getters and setters that you got also see. So this is how you were to use, of course, using the porch way or yeah they're using the porch way to create your own simply java mod model however using more using this project to learn more it makes it easier you don't really have to even declare your uh, default constructor and your argument constructor and your getters and setters let's look at the next slide okay so this is how it would look like if it was written using um Project Lombok. So it's the same model, gives you the same ability. However, this one is very shortened and it makes it easier to read and to maintain it. Imagine if you had 30 years amount of uh, variables that you need to use for this class, such as age, name, street, last name. Of course, there's quite a lot of those variables that you could add there, which will also be much more, which will also be more work for you to create those argumented constructor, default constructor, and getter and setters. Okay, so folks, let's look at how we can create our own. Well, I have a Spring Boot project here at my screen that I've already uh, started working on. Well, so what I will do now, I'm just going to showcase how you could use this project Lombok to shorten out your existing models or adopting to your overall projects okay so now imagine we have a basic okay maybe before even setting on the model let's first look at what we need for the setup okay so the first thing we need once of course you have generated your project and you've imported it to your ite you simply need to add the this, this dependency which is the project lombok dependency to your project pom file which is your maven dependency file so this is the only dependency we require so once you add this of course you will refresh maven to auto download the dependency to your project once you do that that's all you need to add that's all you require for this and lastly we simply go to our model so now let's say we wanted to create a new model of course so a model called book so of course we know a book will contain either a book name book number and a book type of course and a price but let's look at this model okay so this is a basic java model a, a, this is a basic portion model so uh that contains uh this uh as you can see this is what we require so of course for any java models that are written the old way without using my project lombok requires to have the first things is to declare your variables, which you could see private long ID, a name, ISPN, and a published date and the price, and also a book type that is also three options. So, fine. So, now we declare a default constructor, which is another thing we need to declare. We declare public constructor, a default constructor, and we also declare an argumented constructor that takes those parameters and assign those. So, which is now an argumented constructor. Moving on, we declare now again, uh, meaning for each field of each variable, we need to declare a, both a getter and a set. So, imagine that. Imagine you'd have about 100 fields that you need to do all the same process over and over again for 100 fields. So, as you can see, this is becoming too long. The more you keep on adding more fields, more variables, you need to keep on again adding your getters and setters and also updating what your constructors, meaning your argumented constructors. So this becomes tedious here sometimes to keep on doing the same work over and over again. However, with the help of Project Lombok, we will look at how we can shortenize, we can shortenize this code or we can make it shorter and more readable without having to refactor each time we need to add a new variable. So of course, Using Lombok, it makes it even safer, even for issues. Imagine you would probably add to one field and then you would then forget maybe to add to add it on your documented constructor or maybe forget either a setter or a getter, which is also a, a common issue developers make. 
when they are using the old way of fighting uh, mortals in Java, especially if they have too many fields. Okay, so let's look at now, folks, how we can write the same code. Okay, maybe to show you again how you how it works. Let's I will run it and we can create the same book model using Lombok. So now let's first start it up, then we could see how we can create a new one. Okay. So they starting up our project, of course. Okay, so now we simply go to let it start. Okay. As you can see, Fox, it is started on put 8080. Okay, so let's go to our postman. So now let's add one more book, one book. Okay, so we add in this book, which is uh which is named condition the name Java Clean Code, ISPN, publish it in the price and the book type. So let's submit this book. Okay. As you can see status code is 200 and the book is submitted successfully so let's create another one let's say this time it's gonna be python clean code and simply just change ispn maybe change the price to 750 and still keep it as the hardcover then okay let's submit this one too okay there is go also this one submitted so let's just run now a get to just get all of those new books we created okay as you can see both of those are in which is the first one and the second one so meaning we are getting the this behavior which is the normal behavior so now again so if i now i were to stop it and refactor this model to a new way that uses project lombok and then let's look at how it will to look like so of course Let's quickly prepare this. I'll have a simple snippet that I would like to use. So again, I'm just going to copy this and remove it all. Okay, so now pretty much we are starting a very clean model. So now let's simply add the refactored model, which is the refactored model that uses Lombok. Okay, so now this is how this looks like with model with Lombok. So as you can see, we simply provide an import of Lombok. We get the same import as they want previously. This is just these annotations that we require. So meaning, as I said, this one, the add data. Basically, it combines most of the common one. It combines the add data. What else? It combines this one. Same goes as using the add setter. It, pro it combines that as well. So meaning, you just simply do one declaration at data and meaning now the no args basically this is means the default constructor and the all args it means the argumented constructor which we also looked at previously and the builder as i said also it gives you an ability to use the builder pattern in your model you don't really have to manually declare it in your model so this is how cool project lombok is and let's look at how short this model is Let's look the only thing we have is just to declare our variables use put the annotation that's all the same ability that we were getting on the previous one we are still getting it the same one again this means now essentially we are getting getters and setters and constructors both argumented and default and even the two string function that's what we are getting using the same power of using project lombok so let's start it up again of course at this stage as you can see nothing else is broken to our application save this class is still functioning using this using still the same book model again it's still able to find those functions inside it so same goes with our controller if we to look at the controller let's look at the controller as well so nothing is failing no errors at all so now let's again start out the project and try to test using the new model that we have refactored. Okay, so if now I go to start up the application, basically, essentially now, this means we should be still getting the same behavior as previously. Okay, let's just give it a time, folks, while it is starting up. Okay. Yeah. 
So these are more advantages of using Project Lumbok. It makes your code to very well, more shortened and it makes it very clean and readable. So now it makes it even simpler to add more other fields. Imagine you wanted to add as well an author, a book author, and an address, a publication address, and so on and so on. So again, it makes it very simpler. You simply add what a field automatically everything else will be added for you by Lombok. So again folks it is started on put it eight let's go ahead and test the new behavior okay so okay now we'll simply add again another one so since this uses what so I'll simply add it again because each time we start up the application it forgets because it uses a, it using an in memory as the database the h2 in memory okay again let's add one book they said okay let's add the book so we add the book okay there we go let's add the second one now which is say maybe uh html this one let's give html clean code okay there's no way okay let's give it 150 and let's put it send this one to maybe change the ispn to a. let's just send this at one okay okay so because the fox boot our books have been added so now let's do a what a get request to get all the new books we've added okay let's present uh, as you can see fox we are still getting the exact same behavior using the old way of declaring or writing in models and using the new way which uses both at Lombok we are still getting the exact same behavior so folks this is how cool project Lombok is it makes your code very more of a shortened readable you don't really need to add a lot of complications and even if you wanted to add more fields you simply declare your field for example maybe to a private string author name author name simple makes it very simple as well to just simply do that the rest will be auto taken care of you don't even have to declare a constructor declare anything else to string getters and setters everything is still there we are still getting can still get the same functionality if we can and use this new variable okay I'll remove it folks since we don't have any implementation for it but uh, this is where folks I will be ending today okay lastly before I forget again just to give you uh, some insights where not to use Lombok again you need a full control of a method implementation it basically means you can't use uh, project Lombok if you don't have uh, a full control in your function or in your method such as if you are importing something from somewhere or a new module from an external library or from external modules so you can use Lombok in that case you need to use Lombok in your applications whereby you have a full control to your models you see okay again okay. if you are building a library or a public API which is exactly what I just said so working on an extremely performance critical code again Lombok gives you some performance issues in those using compatibility issues with some older tools of course as I said it requires to use version 17 and above of Java so folks again okay, summary Lombok saves much time and reduces cluster also it is very perfect for data models and DTOs easy to integrate with Spring Boot project always test and review generated methods so that's very important to test and review the auto generated models methods okay folks i think i will be ending here today please if you like this video please like and subscribe to my youtube channel and if you have any questions any issues you are having in terms of setting it up let me know i will automate i will simply assist please folks thank you so much see you next time cheers